welcome to the fourth session of data handling till now you have learned different measures of central tendency and many interesting things about them today we will be continuing on this and we will also learn some new things so let's get started we saw how each of these measures of central tendency help us to understand data better and many times a combination of these mean median and mode may give a better understanding rather than using a single one but the question is will these measures of central tendency always represent the nature of data fully here are two groups of numbers or data you can see that each group has some numbers same and some numbers different we will look at different measures of central tendency for these two groups both these numbers have the same range and equal mean median and mode you may not have thought that something like this could be possible isn't it here is the visual representation of the numbers in both the groups the height of the bars denote the number of occurrences of each number you can see how two different groups of numbers have the same range and equal mean median and mode the numbers here are picked in a way to make this happen this is just to show you the limitations of central tendency that sometimes different groups of numbers may still give very similar measures of central tendency you will learn some more methods in your higher classes which give better understanding of the group of data you will also be learning some more methods in your higher classes to understand the nature of data in a better way one more way of understanding data is representing the data in a visual form which you have been doing in your previous classes using bar graphs we will look at some interesting scenarios and the data related to that and try to represent it visually and understand what it is saying a survey was conducted among 100 students asking about their favorite color so children what can we use here yes we can use mode and the collected information was tabulated as a frequency distribution table and then it was put in the form of a bar graph and this is how it looks notice the numbers on the axis 10 20 30 and 40 for larger numbers as we won't be able to draw points for each number we make use of something called a scale that is here we have marked a point for every 10 people looking at this bar graph can you tell which color has which color was the most liked yes it is green with 35 students chosen green what is the next most liked color that will be red with 32 students and what is the least liked color it is yellow with 10 students children can you tell what the difference between the first highest and the second highest choices yes it is 35 minus 32 which is 3 similarly can you tell the difference between the highest choice and the lowest choice yes that is 35 minus 10 which is 25 you can also add up all these numbers to know the number of students in this group children did you know that places near the north pole and south pole don't receive sunlight for many days in a year and also the sun doesn't set for many days during the other parts of the year why do you think this happens this is because the tilt of the earth's axis towards the sun and away from the sun you may also have observed this that at different seasons the sunrise and sunset times in india also vary to a certain extent you can see 
a part of the world map here. Look where our country is. Did you find out? Good. I have also marked two locations using the red marker. The first one is the city Helsinki, which is the capital of Finland. This is towards the North Pole. And the other is Wellington, which is the capital of New Zealand. And this is near the South Pole. We will be comparing the duration of bright sunshine in these two cities over the year. This table shows the monthly hours of bright sunshine in Helsinki and Wellington. I have shown alternate months so that it becomes easier for us to look at it and compare. Okay, this feels like just some bunch of numbers, isn't it? Let us put these numbers on a graph and find out more. From this graph, we can see that how the number of sunshine hours varies throughout the year for the cities Helsinki and Wellington. For Helsinki, in the starting of the year, you can see that the months of sunshine is very low and the sunshine hours increases as it reaches the middle of the year where it reaches the maximum and again starts decreasing towards the end of the year. Whereas for Wellington, the city in the red color, the sunshine hours are more in the starting of the year and it starts reducing towards the middle of the year and then again it starts increasing towards the end of the year. Children, observe the V shape that is for the city Wellington, see how it is in the form of a V shape, whereas for the city of Helsinki, it is in the form of an inverted V shape, isn't it? You can look at how two different cities, Helsinki which is towards the North Pole and Wellington which is towards the South Pole, how different patterns of sunshine they have throughout the year. Now we will look at some graphs related to population trends and find some interesting observations. This is called a population pyramid. Children, observe the horizontal and vertical scales. See what you can make out of this graph by observing. This population pyramid shows the demography of India in 2020. Demography means the numbers related to births, deaths and population distribution across ages and gender. So the horizontal axis, the numbers are in millions. The left portion shows the population of males and the right portion shows the population of females. Looking at this, we can say that there are about 60 million baby boys and about 55 million baby girls right now in the age group of 0 to 5. Children, see how many boys and girls are there in your age group that is from 10 to 15. Yes, so this is 10 to 15. There are about 66 million boys and about 62 million girls. But we won't be able to tell the exact numbers from this kind of a graph. Children, do you know why India is called one of the youngest countries in the world? See which age group has more people from this graph. In the ages 10 to 30, you can see that there are more people. So, if we want the more age, then it will be the longest bar, that is 15 to 20. So, the more age group in our country is 15 to 20 in the year 2020. Also, children, as you can see that in the younger age groups, the male population is slightly higher than the female population. But see, it is quite opposite in the older ages, where more women are reaching the older ages compared to men.
This is how the demography of India looked in the year 1970. You can see a triangular shape which says birth rate was high and the peak is more pointed which says the death rate was also high. It means that few people reached their old ages due to lots of reasons like wars, famines, droughts and lack of proper medical facilities. Since then, these conditions have improved in 2020. You can see that the birth rate is stabilizing and also more people are reaching their older ages because of better living conditions. We will look at the future prediction of demography of India in the year 2070. You can see that the birth rate is reducing and as a result, there are more people in the middle and older age groups. As these are predictions, the grey rectangles shown here are a possible range. Now we will look at Japan's population in 2020. Children, look at the horizontal scale. It is different than it was for India. Japan has more older people compared to younger people. You can see the longer bars in the higher ages in the higher age groups. More people reaching old ages means they have lower death rates. And here you can see that the birth rate is also lower. Lower birth rate means fewer kids are born. And Japan's population is on the declining side or shrinking side, similar to some European countries. Here too you can observe that more women have reached older ages compared to men. Now we will look at Russia's population pyramid in 2020. Observe the top portion. See the difference between male population and female population in this section. Children, why do you think there is so much difference between the male and female populations in this age group? So this age group is 70 to 90. What happened 70 years to 90 years ago? So this disparity between male and female populations is because of World War II where so many soldiers had lost their lives and just below you can see a relatively sudden growth. This was because the war was over and normal life had resumed. We see many graphs, reports and statistics in newspapers, television and internet every now and then, isn't it? But sometimes they may give you a distorted view or a biased view and some people and some organizations use these strategies in advertising, in influencing and changing people's opinions and beliefs. We will look at some aspects of where these graphs can mislead us and misinform us and also look at how we can be careful and observant of such things. In 1992, a famous automobile brand Chevrolet had this infographic saying more than 98% of all heavy trucks sold in the last 10 years are still on the road. You may ask, okay, so what about it? When we look at the bars representing different brands, it looks like Chevrolet did twice as better than Toyota and almost 5 times better than Nissan, isn't it? But children, take a closer look at the percentages on the axis. This scale is only from 95 to 100%. So truncating the axis makes it look like there is a significant difference among these brands. But children, look at the same information plotted with the axis from 0 to 100%. See how it looks compared to the previous graph. Not much of a difference between the brands, isn't it? This is a very common method of showing graphs which can be misleading by distorting the axis. Although the graph plotted is correct. You can see how distorting the scale gives an exaggerated feeling or perception of even tiny differences among the things being compared. This is more evident in bar graphs as 
we tend to assume that the difference in the heights of the bar graphs is proportional to the difference in values. Here is a graph showing annual global ocean temperatures over the past 50 years. That is, from the year 1970 till 2019. That is, these are the average ocean temperatures calculated over each year from 1970 till 2019. The temperature is given in Celsius. Children, what can you say looking at the variation in temperature over the last 50 years? You may say it looks almost the same. The line is almost a straight line and it is not going up by much. Children, you may think that this slight increase may not make much of a difference. But children, did you know that even a 0.5 degree Celsius or a 1 degree Celsius increase in temperature will accelerate global warming, rising sea levels, loss of biodiversity and many other harmful effects. Let us look at this graph closely and see what it has to say. Observe the title of the graph here. It says Global Annual Ocean Temperature Anomalies. Here anomalies means they fix a value which we may call the normal value and Comparing with the normal value, the difference is shown. You can observe the numbers on the axis. The differences given are from minus 0.1 degree Celsius till plus 0.8 degree Celsius. So these are the differences compared to the normal value chosen. Observe how it is increasing from 1970 till 2019. Children, can you tell how much the temperature has increased since 1970 till 2019? You can see that it is almost 0.8 degree Celsius increase in the past 50 years, which is not good for the planet. It is important that we draw graphs according to the use case and the context of the information. You just saw how visualizing the same information differently bringing in the context can have significant impact on how we can use and understand the data. A related pun is here. Say you were standing with one foot in an oven and the other in an ice bucket. According to mean statisticians, you are perfectly comfortable. Now I will show you some statements. And what you have to do is, you have to tell me whether it will always happen, never happen, or sometimes happens. The first one is, you are older today than yesterday. Yes, it is always true. The second one is, polar bears live near the South Pole. This does not happen because polar bears live near the North Pole. The third one is, it will rain at around 5 pm on Sunday. We don't know, it may happen or it may not happen. So, generally, we look at the sky saying, oh, the sky is dark and cloudy today, so there are more chances of rains. Or we may look at a clear and bright sky and say, there are few chances of raining today. And the fourth one is, the next traffic light that will be seen is green. Again, we don't know. It may be green or it may be other colors. As you saw, there are some events which are always true. And there are some events which are never true and there are some other events which lie in between these. For events those lie in between, we say there are chances, how likely or how unlikely it is. You know there are 26 alphabets in the English language. Say I write each alphabet on a chit of paper, put it in a box, then mix it properly and I pick out a chit randomly. So what are the chances? That, that chit contains a vowel. Very less you may say, isn't it? Because there are only 5 vowels out of 26 alphabets. So what are the chances that the chit contains a consonant? The chances are high, isn't it? Because the number of consonants are 21. Picking a vowel is less likely and picking a consonant is more likely. What is probability? 
probability just says how likely something is. For example, if a coin is tossed, it is equally likely that it shows a heads or a tails. So, we say the likelihood of a coin toss being heads is half and for tails is also half. We say that in general that if we toss a coin, half the times it comes up as heads and half of the times it comes up as tails. Similarly, if we roll a dice, how many possibilities are there? There are 6 possibilities as there are 6 faces and the numbers being 1 to 6. And these numbers 1 to 6 are equally likely. So, we say that each number occurs 1 out of 6 times. That is, the probability of each number is 1 by 6. We give probabilities to events from values 0 to 1. We say the probability of an event is 0 if there is no chance of it occurring. For example, the probability of a dice that I showed you now showing the number 7 is 0 because it is not possible and probability that an even number is divisible by 2 is 1, isn't it? Because all even numbers are divisible by 2. So, this is always true. Hence, we say its probability is 1. For events that are guaranteed or certain to happen, we say the probability to be 1. And for events that are never possible, we say probability is 0. Children, try to think of some more events with probabilities 0 and 1. What is the probability of a dice roll giving an odd number? A dice has numbers 1 to 6. So, what are the chances of it being an odd number? The odd numbers on a dice are 1, 3 and 5. So, there are 3 odd numbers out of the 6 numbers on the dice. So, the probability will be 3 by 6 which is equal to 1 by 2. That is, half of the times the dice roll gives an odd number and the other half will be an even number. And what is the probability of a dice roll giving a multiple of 3? Children, out of the numbers 1 to 6, which are the multiples of 3? They are 3 and 6. So, what are the chances that a dice roll is a multiple of 3? It is 2 out of 6 outcomes, which is same as 1 by 3. That is, 1 out of 3 times, the chances are that dice roll is a multiple of 3. You will be learning many more things about probabilities in your higher classes. Children, children, in this class, we have learnt about mean, median, mode, which are measures of central tendency. And also, we learnt about different examples and scenarios where those can be used and also some of their limitations. We also used graphs to understand huge amount of data and large numbers and also learnt about graphs which can mislead us. Finally, we had a short glimpse of what probability is. We have finished the chapter data handling. I will see you in the next class. Bye.